Oh, hello. Today we are celebrating the fact that I have been on booktube for five whole years. Uh, more than five years, actually, because I think the first upload was on July 1st, 2017. So yeah, it's been five, five years. Who, who to thunk it? Um, I'm sorry if I'm low energy. I'm still adjusting to this current time zone that I'm back in because I've been traveling and uh, I am not looking to do a lot of editing. So you're gonna have a lot of ums and likes. I assume that if you clicked on this, you're kind of down for whatever with me because good Lord, this is a super navel gazy kind of video, but I do usually check in around the anniversary mark and kind of talk about how things are going. And I am going to be getting ready whilst I talk to you guys about that. So uh, strap in for some free association, low editing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming if you're still here, you're cool with that being kind of the vibe. Okay, so yeah, five years. I think part of what's kind of, I don't know, I've been super introspective. So I just turned 35 a couple of days ago and I was in London and I was with my best friend. I just had the best day. It was just such a lovely I don't know, like it was not like we did anything too crazy. She was very, she, we were gonna go try to see, um, also if you can see the cat, gosh, these cats are killing me. So since I was traveling, Marple, all she does now is meow, like all day, every day. She's just meowing and meowing and meowing like that. And she is so clingy. I mean, it's adorable and I love it in the sense of like, when she falls asleep and she first wakes up, she immediately starts meowing and looking for me and then she runs over and I feel really guilty. I'm assuming she missed me while I was gone. Hastings ignored me for a couple of days, but uh, you know, he's warming back up anyway. I'm sorry, if you hear meowing, it's just a part of, it's a part of the Marple deal right now. And there's just very little I can do to soothe her other than just let her meow it out. So anyway, so I was in London for my birthday and we were gonna go to see Witness for the Prosecution, um, which I think is still at the County Hall Theater. But I was so tired by that part of the trip. Oh my God, I just couldn't. So we just had this very lovely, simple day. We met Jess Owens for breakfast slash brunch. And that was such a treat. And then we hung around my fancy ass hotel room, which I splurged on. That was sort of my birthday present to myself. And we watched Midsummer Murders. We went to have a very fancy high tea. We were staying at the Claremont. We had high tea there. And then, you know, we just hung out and talked and shared. And I was getting misty eyed talking to her because I was like, I just have, I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm in a really happy place in my life. My life is not perfect. No one's is. When I think back to five years ago though, I don't know, I just, I think I've grown a lot in the last five years. I don't know. They always say that your 30s are like so much better than your 20s because you kind of know who you are and you can just sort of live in that confidence and live in sort of just being still young, but enjoying, you know, kind of knowing who you are and where you're going a little bit better. I definitely have found that to be the case so far because I don't know, I, five years ago, I started this channel because I was so missing having the connection of talking about books. That's such, if you've ever done like a liberal arts kind of program, you know that that is a huge part of that experience is just talking about books, reading the same things with people, discussing it. Yeah, I mean, that's just a huge part of what kind of the curriculum tends to be. And I really was missing that. My dad was really sick and I was just so anxious. I could not, I was a hashtag struggle bus. Sorry, I had to go prevent a kitty disaster. I don't totally remember what I was saying, but I think I was basically just saying I was an anxious mess. Dad was sick. I was not thriving. I was not live, laugh, loving. <laughs> It was not girl bossing or gatekeeping. It was just not the best time. And when I tell you the difference that having this as a creative outlet has made to my sanity and overall just like well being, aside from anything else that has come from this channel, I can't express how happy, glad, thankful I am that I decided to do this because I just think, ah. I just think that having this as a creative outlet and as a project when I have been anxious when I have been 
sad or I don't know, just like not needing needing an outlet, needing something to help me kind of like deal with what was going on in my life when I was in a ton of pain, my autoimmune disease situation. Like I just can't express how glad I am that I've done this. And like, even aside from anything else that's happened, that was such a good decision. Though I will say when I look back five years ago, I mean, I get, I do understand why I was resistant to medication at the time. Frankly, I think that was some like internalized ableism uh, and just like overall not understanding how much of a difference that can make. But when I tell you that like my teeny tiny dose of Zoloft every day has made a world of difference. Oh my God. Anyway, that was okay. That's Mama Mara just reminding you that medication for real issues like anxiety that are like materially impacting your quality of life. Don't be afraid. It's so, so helpful. I, I don't know. I feel like every session with my therapist ends with me saying like, I cannot believe I resisted this for so long. <laughs> Why didn't I just do this? Um, and you know, sometimes we gotta learn things the hard way. Apparently I had to learn that the hard way, but I think the other things that have changed were, you know, I realized that like I wasn't happy in the city I was living in, so I moved. I realized I wasn't happy in the job I was in, so I got a new one. I realized that I needed a creative outlet, so I created one. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I know that that is a, all, I'm saying all of that from a tremendous pl place of privilege because like, you know, I'm single, so like I didn't have to worry about figuring out what my partner, like how a partner figured out, like, you know, figured into that equation. I didn't have to worry about how like kids figured into that. Um, but for me, I guess I would just say part of I think what is cool looking back on five years of this channel is, I don't know, I feel proud of myself. Like uh, as an ongoing theme in my life, like when Oh my gosh, I keep accidentally blinding myself with this mirror. Um, as an ongoing theme in my life, if I am not happy in a situation or if I need to make a change, I, I do it. And I, I think that that's a quality in myself that I am proud of, that I, I don't linger or not even, I don't know how to say it. Cause it's like, I don't want to make it seem like eh, if people are unhappy, it's their own fault. Like I totally don't believe that. But I think that I have been able to make what I know are hard choices to pursue my own happiness or to pursue what is best for me. And I'm really thankful that I have been in a position to do that and that I've had the disposition that has allowed me to like actually really just not linger if things were not working out in the way that suited my own contentedness or happiness long term. Yeah, I'm proud of that. And I think that this channel represents like the positive, like a positive manifestation of that because I was like, you know, I miss talking to people about books and I'm gonna create a space where I can do that. Um, I'm so thankful I had this during the pandemic when I was so sick, um, trying to figure out what was wrong with me. This was a life-saving distraction, honestly. So that was fantastic. I'm really, yeah, that was like a necessary period. I feel like I'm being very self-focused in all of this. I mean, I guess it's my video so I can do what I want, but okay. So like, that's what the channel has meant to me on a personal level for the past five years. In terms of like th other things I'm proud of with this endeavor in the last five years, these cats, I miss them so much and now they are driving me actually crazy. They will not stop meowing. I keep having to stop and just be like, please, for the love of God, stop meowing. You're driving me crazy. Okay. So things that I'm proud of in general on the channel, like creatively, I'm always very proud of whenever somebody will like message me or comment, which is more likely for me to see it. I'm sporadic at best guys at checking my DMs. But when someone it leaves a comment of like, oh, I read this book because you recommended it and I loved it. Like that honestly will never get old. Um, especially if it's a book that like I really, really love or if it's a book that I feel like is underhyped. I just, I will never get tired of people saying like, oh, I read this on your recommendation and it was great. And I'm like, I know it was great. That's why I recommend it. But it just feels, that makes me feel like a million dollars whenever people tell me that. I, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love, I love books so much. And so helping people connect with books that they're gonna love, especially because so many people don't read as much as I do, like my weird compulsive reading self. Most people don't read that much. And so when they do have time to read, like helping them find something that they're actually gonna really love, just, 
means the world to me. I love it so much and I'm always so proud when that happens. I also am really proud of how many people have read specific authors upon my recommendation. So like Christy, obviously I get a ton of that. I also get a lot of like people who are doing Christy things for school who um, will message me and say like, oh, I'm looking for, you know, a book about this or like, I need to read a Christy with this element in it. Can you help me or whatever like that? I always love spreading Christy, but like, you know, a ton of people now have read Psy Changeling because I bullied them into it. Um, Ruby Dixon, Alona Andrews, Nora Roberts, you know, just trying different mysteries in general. Like I've gotten a lot of people saying like, oh, you know, I tried thriller or mystery. It's not normally my thing, but I really, really liked it. Um, yeah, that always just, that makes me feel fantastic. I love helping people connect with a book or with an author that I love. So I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I've been so consistent. Um, again, I think some of that is my like, once I start something, I finish it kind of personality. So it can actually sometimes things that I'm not as proud of is that I think there were times where I probably needed to take a break and didn't. Um, so I'm getting better at pacing myself, which I am proud of. But um, in general, I'm glad that like I stuck with it even when, you know, things were hard or especially, th oh guys, it's so hard to grow a channel. It really is. Getting your first subscriber, your first 10, your first 100, your first thousand, like it's just, it's gray hair, Ooh, okay. Um, it's so, it's just so hard and it's really easy to give up because it's very discouraging sometimes. But I'm really proud that I stuck with it. So my favorite hobby these days is plucking gray hairs when I see them. I'm actually, considering I'm 35 and I have such dark hair, I'm actually, I'm doing pretty good on, on the grays, but when I spot them, they must go. But yeah, I'm really proud I stuck with it and I kept going. And you know, I've privated a few videos, like there's a few that I was like, ugh, you know, upon reflection, not your best work. <laughs> Not necessarily what um, you want people seeing, thinking about you, whatever. Um, I don't know what I was expecting considering I just pumped a ton of this onto my brush. Um, okay, well, we're just going for a more full coverage kind of look today, apparently. But yeah, I mean, I've privated a few things, but for the most part, like, I feel like I've made things that I'm proud of that I, even if I look back on them, still like to some degree or... I respect it for what it was in that moment. As the wise uh, drag queens Katya and Trixie have said, um, if you don't look back on creative choices you made in the past and have some like, oh, that's not great, it means you're not growing. It means that you're not getting better or, you know, evolving as a creative person. So, you know, there's definitely things I look back on and I'm like, no, that's not how I would have done that today. But there are definitely things I look back on and I'm like, you know that I feel like that was a video where I figured out something that I enjoyed either in content creation or about reading in general um, or about interacting with you guys. Like, you know, it is, God, I love this. Can I just say my new obsession is this Bear With Me concealer as foundation. It's so, I just like it so much better. I love the consistency. I love that it's not creasy on my increasing aging skin. Um, I love the finish. Mix, you just really went above and beyond on this one. I love it. Yeah, like I'm trying to think, I feel like I should highlight specific videos or eras of books like Whoa, where I figured something out or something that I'm proud of. Well, I'm, I'm definitely proud of Project Poirot. That was my first like long reviewing series that I did and I think you know I learned a lot from that about like how to talk about books in a way that is helpful and helpful to people who've not yet read the book but still a meaningful conversation for people who have like okay I feel like I'm tuning my own horn too much in this video but I guess this is part of the thing I do feel like I have a good skill set of being able to talk about books in a substantive way without spoiling them it's a, a tricky line to walk, but I think that it's one that for the most part, now there's a few of those videos that I probably said a little too much <clears throat> or whatever, like I'm sure I wasn't, you know, perfect in those. But um, I think for the most part, that was something I learned about myself 
through the process of that series was that I'm pretty good at being able to talk about books um, in a way that I think is interesting, at least to some people, and, uh, you know, has something to say, but isn't just like, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then I couldn't believe it when this happened. I feel like I'm pretty, pretty good at that. Do you hear this, this whiny ass cat? I don't know if you can hear her. She is just trying my patience. I feel like this is her punishing me for being gone. It's just like all day, like all day. All she wants to do is meow. Okay. Um, so I'm proud of that. I'm trying to think of other things that were like key moments in the history of books like Woe. I did a vlog reading the lowest rated Goodreads picks on my TBR. I think that's where I figured out how to vlog. Yeah, or like, I, I feel like I remember at the time watching it back and being like, oh, I really like this video. It wasn't that it was a like unique concept. I feel like everybody on booktube was doing that at that moment, but I liked the way that I did it. And I think that was me realizing that I could vlog. So I think that was a moment. You know, my first video essays, again, I look back and I'm like, oh, I have critiques about how I would do that now. But I found those really creatively fulfilling and, um, they were things that I wasn't sure how to make. So figuring out how to make them, I feel like was a big moment. So I, I definitely feel proud of that. And you know what? I'm proud that I've pivoted. Maybe that's something that like overall I'm proud of. I'm proud that I've pivoted to what, like, well, both like how booktube itself has evolved and changed over time, which it, it certainly has, but also just to like what being true to what I was interested in making and not just getting stuck in a rut of like, oh, this is what people want from me. Like I've successfully pivoted at key moments in a way to keep this interesting for me, because if it's interesting for me, that means long term I will keep doing this because if it stops being interesting to me, then I'm going to get bored and stop doing it. So I feel like I've, I've done a pretty good job of like writing the line um, of making things that you guys like, but also still staying true to what is interesting to me. So I think that that is something that I feel proud of. And I'm, you know, like, I think, for example, at the end of last year, I had like a real aha moment about needing to get back to mood reading, which used to, you know, I used to be 100% a mood reader. I think because I'm a planner and I enjoy TBRs and I really like watching other people's TBRs, I think that I had gotten overly prescriptive in my reading. And what I'm realizing maybe is the way to say this, I do a good job of having a plan on a shorter term basis that is in alignment with my moods. And I think I have successfully moved to content where that is what I'm able to do, which I think was a great step for this channel staying interesting and fun for me. I think if I had not done that, I don't know. I've seen some interesting videos recently about like, is YouTube going away? Is YouTube dying? And I don't think that's the case. I think people still like YouTube. I know I do for like longer form things, but you know, TikTok is definitely, I mean, I, hey, I love TikTok. I also want to start making more TikToks. That is something that I'd like to do in the coming year. I enjoy it and I would like to make some more of it. But, you know, I get that people love TikTok. And I do think that, I mean, don't listen, Susan and the YouTube gods. I do think YouTube's algorithm is like stale. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but I feel like they have not figured out how to pivot and how to respond to TikTok well, and whatever it is that they're trying to do doesn't seem to be great. At least like from my experience as a viewer of YouTube, I just am like, you guys are not serving me what I feel like you should be serving me. But anyway, I've been watching a lot of things recently on YouTubers feeling, I mean, it's always been like YouTubers feel burnt out. That's like, a perennial thing. But I also think YouTubers are just like, it feels kind of weird and stale over here. And I definitely have felt that at times. But I, I keep just always coming back to the true north of like, am I interested in what I'm making? Like, if do I like what I'm making? If I like it and I'm interested in it, probably someone else will be. And that's really all I can kind of go off of. So anyway, all that to say, because I feel like there's generally just sort of inertia on YouTube in general right now, I think if I had not been pivoting to things that were staying interesting to me, I would have just been like, you know what, I'm good. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna retreat into my TikTok watching hole and never emerge. Okay, so those are things I'm proud of from like content creation. And then I feel like the final thing that I'm proud of and enjoy and like reflect on is just like the community aspect of all of this. And actually, you know what? I'm going to, my camera's about to overheat and I need to do some like detail work. So just a second, I'll be back. Okay, the final thing that I'm proud of is the kind of just community aspect. And I mean that, on two levels. One, I'm proud that I have made some real friendships, like real ass friendships on this platform. Um, people that I have been friends with for years at this point, and also new people coming into my life. So I'm proud that I'm like staying open to meeting new people and developing new relationships. You know, you can't, there really is an ebb and flow of friendship. I recently did on Jess Owens' channel, me, her, and Elle did a live stream talking about clicks on booktube, just like kind of the nature of online bookish community, um, which I thought was a fun conversation. And one of the things I was talking about in that was just like the reality, I think, especially as I age, just that friendships ebb and flow, you know, you only have room for so many people at one point in your life. But as you have room, that is expanding or shrinking, like not being afraid to embrace new people and also, you know, not beating yourself up if some friendships, you know, go more, dis more distant over time and, you know, just sort of take on a different kind of intimacy level to them. So I'm really, I try to be a good friend and I feel like I've been a good friend to some of my online bookish peeps and I've definitely had them be good friends to me. So I'm proud of that. And then I'm also just proud of the overall community that I've built with you guys. Yeah, I don't know. I really appreciate that for the most part. It's like a very positive community here. Um, I really appreciate people's feedback and like the fact that people are interested in what I do at all. Like that's really cool. When I really like, it's hard to keep the right perspective because in the scheme of social media, I'm still certainly a micro influencer. Don't get too big for your britches here. But even when I just think about like the number of people who are subscribed to me or even just the number of people who see a video, like if I try to visualize how many people that is, that's so cool. Like that's so cool that people give any kind of a shit about what I have to say about anything um, is really neat. And um, I'm really proud of overall it being a pretty positive, you know, like I feel like my comment section is like a nice place to be, which is certainly a credit to you guys. Uh, I I think if we're talking about maybe we can transition to things that I'd like to do better um, or I'd like to just change. I do think that I internalize criticism. So like I, it's funny because I've heard other content creators tell me like you take too much feedback from people. And I'm like, I know, but I don't want to be closed off to criticism. But internally, when I get criticism, I'm just like, Rah! Um, it's a weird balance. So I think an ongoing struggle to contextualize and put the right amount of emphasis on criticism is something that I need to continue to work on. That is a part of being an online person is learning to do that better and better. Um, I think not overextending myself is something I need to continue to work on in the context of this channel. And then, um, like I said, I think I would like to start making a little bit more TikTok content um, just because I enjoy watching it and I think it's fun. And I think that it's where some like a, some of the verve of the online bookish community is kind of over on TikTok right now. So I'd like to partake of that a little bit more. So yeah, anyway, that is my rambly get ready with me five years on booktube. Uh, anniversary video. Very little editing probably is going to go into this, so I hope you guys liked a kind of rambly mess. But yeah, I just want to say a big thank you. You guys are what make this fun. Like, it, this is the whole reason you put it out in public is for people to watch and comment and engage. And so I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I have really, I just in, continue to really enjoy this and I will continue to do this for as long as I continue to really enjoy it. So thank you for making it enjoyable. Um, and just let me know, I don't know, maybe like a book that you've been loving recently or whatever you want to tell me, tell me in the comments. And yeah, I think that will do it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social means if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will talk to you soon. Bye!